In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2 and I will be using Windows 11. Okay, let's head on over to PCSX2.net. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on Latest Nightly. And you will see that this emulator is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. We're using Windows, so we're going to download for Windows. Once you click on it, your download will start. Also, head over to 7zip.org. The link to this page is also in the description below. We're going to use this program to extract the emulator, our ROMs, and our BIOS. So I have saved the PCSX2 file on my desktop. You guys can save it wherever you like, whether that be in an SSD, external SSD, hard drive, or external hard drive. It's up to you. I also have my PS2 BIOS and a PS2 ROM, which I am sorry guys, I cannot show you where to get these files here on YouTube. Now they aren't hard to find, Google is your friend, but if you need some help finding these files, then I will leave the link to my Patreon page in the description below. I have some videos there that can help you out. Now we're going to go ahead and extract all three of these files using 7-Zip. If you already have 7-Zip installed, all you need to do is right click on the file. We'll start with the emulator first. Go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract the PCSX2. And you will get a new folder containing all of your extracted files. You no longer need the zip file, so you can go ahead and delete that. Next, we'll extract the BIOS, same thing, right click show more options, 7-zip, and extract to PS2 BIOS. Delete the zip file. And last, we're gonna extract our PS2 ROM. Now, when you download a PS2 ROM, it's gonna be in a compressed format that needs to be extracted to be playable in PCSX2. So the same thing here, right click, show more options, 7-zip, but this time we're going to extract here. Delete the zip file. And to show you guys this file type, I'm gonna right click, go to properties. And if you take a look right here, type of file, it's a disk image file.iso. The ISO format is playable in PCSX2, as well as multiple other formats, such as bin slash Q, MDF, CHD, CSO, just to name a few. Now let's go ahead and open that PCSX2 folder. And this file here will be the actual emulator. Let's go ahead and open it. Here you can select your language. I'm gonna leave it at default, which is English. You can also change the theme of the emulator, which as of right now is on dark fusion gray. If you wanna change this to something else, then you can. I prefer to just leave it on gray. And this is up to you. You can leave enable automatic updates checked. I do so that I can get all of the latest updates. Let's go to next. Now we're going to add our BIOS file to the emulator. So let's go ahead and click right here where it says browse. And for me, my BIOS is on my desktop in that folder called PS2 BIOS. Come down to select folder. Now to know you have a working BIOS down here, you will see the files that were in that folder. So inside of my folder, I had a Europe, Japan, and a USA BIOS. Go ahead and highlight which BIOS you want to be your default, which I'm sticking with USA. If you want Japan, click on Japan or Europe. I'm sticking with USA. Next. Now we have to select the location where we have all of our PS2 ROMs. So we're going to click right here, add. Go ahead and locate where you have your PS2 ROMs. In my case, I have them on an external hard drive in a folder called PS2 games, then select folder. Then it's gonna ask you what you like for PCSX2 to scan that drive. Yes. Next. Now it's time to set up your controllers. Controller port one will be player one. Make sure that your controller type stays on DualShock 2. And as of right now, I have a PS5 controller and an Xbox Series X controller connected to my PC. Now, to select which one I wanna use for controller port one, we'll go to automatic mapping. And this one here will be my PlayStation 5 controller, and this will be my Xbox controller. So I'll make my PlayStation 5 controller port one. If you wanna set up that second controller, you can. Next, setup complete, finish. 
Now give the emulator a minute and it will load in all of your ROMs. Okay, now let's go up to settings, interface. Now the only thing we're gonna check here is under game display, start full screen. That way, whenever we launch a game, it will launch in full screen. Back over to the left, let's go down to game list. Now if you add some new ROMs to your ROM folder while this emulator is still open, then you may wanna come here and click scan for new games. Let's go down to BIOS. Now if you wanna select a different BIOS for the emulator to run, you can do that here. Now let's go to emulation. Now we are not gonna change anything here, leave everything at its default settings. And let's go down to graphics. If your PC has a graphics card that was released within the last four to five years, then you will get the best performance by changing this to Vulkan. If you have a older graphics card, then you may want to try OpenGL or Direct3D 11 and 12 will work pretty good as well. Adapter, go ahead and select your graphics card. For me, it's going to be my RTX 3070. But if your PC doesn't have a graphics card, go ahead and select your CPU. For the aspect ratio, now you can leave this on the auto standard 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which is the way PS2 games were intended to be played. Now I prefer to play in widescreen 16 to 9, but I will let you know that some games may look a little stretched. Everything else here, leave at default settings. And let's go over to rendering. For the internal resolution, you can bump your resolution all the way up to 12 times, which is 8K. Now, of course, to see this, you would have to have an 8K monitor and a pretty powerful PC. As for me, my monitor's resolution is 1440p. Now, if your PC doesn't have a graphics card and this emulator will be putting all the weight on the CPU, then you may want to only start out at 1080p, see how your performance is, then maybe you can boost it up or down depending on your performance. And to make sure your games look as good as possible, we want to turn on an isotropic filtering and we're going to bump this all the way up to 16 times. And don't worry, that won't put pressure on your CPU. And we are done under graphics. We're not gonna change anything under audio. So let's go down to memory cards. Go ahead and click right here where it says create. Let's give our memory card a name. I'm just gonna call it saves. And we're gonna leave it on eight megabytes. Okay. Memory card created, okay. And then right here, you will see that card you just created. Go ahead and right click on it and select use for slot one. Now we can come down to close. Now I told you guys earlier that I prefer to play my games in a 16 to nine aspect ratio and that some games may look a little stretched, but to avoid your games looking stretched, you can check to see if any of those games have patches. So if I right click on a game, we can do agent under fire, go to properties, then over here to the left, you will see patches. And this game has a widescreen 16 to nine patch. Now, if I come over here and check enabled, then this game will not be stretched. It will look like it's at a native 16 to nine. Now, not every game will have that patch and some games will have multiple patches and some games will have a 60 FPS patch. For example, if I go to 25 to life properties, patches, this game does not have a widescreen patch, but instead it has a 60 FPS patch. So you would just have to play around with your games, see what patches are available for your favorite games. Now, as of right now, we are viewing our games in a list format. To change your games over to a grid view, then you wanna come up here and click on these four little boxes, and your games are now in the grid view. Now I'm going to show you how to add cover art to all of your games. So you are gonna wanna head over to this GitHub page. I will leave the link to this page in the description below. Once you are here, you wanna scroll down until you see these two URLs right here. This first one is for default covers and the second one is for 3D covers. It's up to you which one you wanna choose. I'm going with default covers. Now all we need to do is copy this URL and the easiest way to do that is come over here to the right and click on this icon and it's gonna say copied. Head back over to the emulator and you wanna go up to tools and cover downloader. And in this box right here, you wanna go ahead and right click and paste that URL and then hit start. 
close. Now, as you see, all of my games have cover art. Now, one last thing before we load up a game. By default, my PlayStation 5 controller is automatically mapped out. If you are using an Xbox controller, then that controller will be automatically mapped out as well. But if you wanna change any of your buttons around, then you can come up here to settings, come down to controllers, select your controller, port one, and here is where you can change any of your buttons. And now we can load up a game, and I'll do Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. But first, let's check and see if it has any patches. So on this game, we can enable widescreen, disable motion blur, and add 60 FPS. When the game starts, in the top left, you will see how many patches you have active. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.